think of central autonomic disorders, we think about disorders that affect the central autonomic network. So this involves a lot of our cortical areas, brain stem, and spinal cord. So any uh, clinical disorders that affect these important areas in autonomic control can lead to autonomic symptoms. And there are some specific ones that we'll be discussing in our education session on uh, Tuesday, April 5th, and specifically highlighting some of the important spinal cord reflexes, brainstem reflex, like the borrow reflex, as well as some uh, central cortical involvement that can manifest in patients with autonomic disorders. The um, treatment and management of central autonomic disorders really varies depending on the type. So um, specific uh, ones in particular, um, like synucleinopathies that involve different areas of the central autonomic uh, network, uh, really focus on the manifestation. So this may be orthostatic hypotension or a drop in blood pressure. And there are a number of different non-pharmacologic and pharmacologic measures that we can use to treat some of the symptoms that are related to the central autonomic disorder. And similarly to uh, uh, spinal cord disorders as well, um, it really varies the management based on what is affected and, and what patients are going through, but we can really tailor, say, blood pressure management or bowel and bladder management depending on the areas of the central nervous system that are affected.